As the sellout crowd continuing to file in here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. And here we go from Gainesville. It's going to be Vincent running it back and then fumbling it out of bounds at the five-yard line. So maybe a little case of uh, the jitters here to start this game. Jason Benson mishandling that kickoff and fumbles it out of bounds at the five. Well, good kick by the Gators as they kick the ball down the deep right side sideline and Benson not able to handle the kickoff, fumbles it out of bounds. It's called a muff, David. Not a fumble, it's a muff. And he muffed it and it gives Moffitt very <laughs> poor field position. There's the young quarterback out of Winter Park. And his offense backed up at the five-yard line. Moffitt rolling out and throwing it incomplete. His receiver was out of bounds. And it wouldn't have been completed even if he had caught it. That's Joaquin, the intended receiver. Sergio Joaquin. And let's check out our starting lineup presented by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. This offensive line, the most experienced returning offensive line in college football from a year ago. Mike Walker is the big playmaker at wide receiver number 11. A senior out of Orlando. And that's Walker split wide to the left on second down and 10 for UCF. Smith. Runs very well between the tackles. That time he pounds out a couple of yards to about the seven-yard line. Florida's defense, the front four back intact. Marcus Thomas back in the starting lineup, joining McDonald, Cohen, and Jarvis Moss. The linebackers uh, about as good as you get in college football, led by Siler and Everett. And the secondary played extremely well last week. Tony Joyner, in particular, rated out very high and was named the team's defensive player of the week in that win against Southern Mississippi. Third down and eight. Moffitt has good protection. And his pass is caught by Rocky Ross. Out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And a first down for the UCF Golden Knights. Now let's check out tonight's keys to the game. Brought to you by Chevrolet, America's number one brand. Number one value. Well, for the Golden Knights, they want a balanced attack. They've got to be able to run the football to set up the pass. And on, on uh, defense, they need some turnovers. They need to be able to take the ball away. The Gators... Looking to improve their running game. Didn't run the ball effective last week. And then they'd like to get more pressure, get some sacks. That time, Muffin had plenty of time to throw the football, David. Well, good protection, you're right. And uh, throwing on that third down play from near the goal line. A gutsy throw by Stephen Moffitt, the senior. And Kevin Smith able to pick up a couple of yards on first down. There's uh, the look at Moffitt. 15 for 20 last week in their win against Villanova for just under 200 yards. George O'Leary, an outstanding uh, job he has done in building this football program. A bowl team a year ago, they went to the Hawaii Bowl and lost in overtime to Nevada. And this is Smith again, and the Gators uh, swarming him near the line of scrimmage. That's Brandon Siler in on that tackle. Brandon Siler, you'll see him right here. I watch him just come off his block. Good job getting off his block, trying to get in there. But Marcus Thomas already showing his effect of being back in the line of scrimmage. He comes from his nose tackle position, straight down the line of scrimmage, getting in, getting in on the tackle. And Marcus Thomas, just an incredible athlete. And the Gators certainly missed his presence last week against Southern Mississippi. Had no quarterback sacks. Had not enough pressure against the Southern Miss quarterback. Third down, high snap. Moffitt wisely. Falls on the ball back at the six-yard line. That could have been a huge play, but uh, Moffitt is able to recover the fumble. There is a flag on the play. Here's another look at it. Just an errant snap by Gagne Marcou as he snaps the ball over the arms of the 6'3 quarterback. I think, David, the, we, we might have been able to use Joe Kim out there, and he still wouldn't have been able to get that one. Uh, I don't think... Any of those Gator basketball players would have been able to reach up and snatch that one. We have a penalty. From the previous stop, we play third down. Marked off against UCF. Look at the Gators right now, defensive line. They've got three defensive ends in there, Harvey, McDonald, and Moss. They're really trying to turn up the pass rush. Well, they got a chance to rush Moffitt again. After the five-yard penalty from the previous spot, 
Moffitt fumbled that snap a bit, steps up and throws a strike over the middle of the field, and the Golden Knights pick up the first down at the 35-yard line. Nicely done by Moffitt after he fumbled that snap, but threw a bullet to Willie Thornton for the first down at 21-yard pickup. And David, this is, watch this offensive line. You are going to get no pressure. He's able to step up, good clean pocket to throw to. Nice job by Thornton of going up, catching the ball in his hands as the ball's a little bit behind him, but so, outstanding execution by the offensive line. First and 10, toss sweep. Nice uh, room on the edge for Kevin Smith, and he picks up 10 or 11 yards to pick up a first down near midfield. At that penalty against the Gators that gave UCF an opportunity to pick up the first down must have been uh, an illegal motion or was, something before the snap. Yeah, yeah David, it, it was an illegal motion, but just a quick pitch to Smith. Good blocking outside. They crack back on the uh, Sam linebacker. This allows him to get the short corner, and Smith gets outside for big yardage. The penalty helped uh, the Golden Knights in the end, and they've got it first down again at their 47. Smith is hit behind the line of scrimmage and then driven down by Brian Crum. He was hit first by Derek Harvey, number 91. And, and then Crum finished him off. And David, and, and for our viewers at home, going back to that penalty, you know, anytime there's a pre-snap penalty, the play is automatically dead, and that's why the snap over the center, over the quarterback's head didn't matter, that it was just a dead ball, five-yard penalty, and it kept the drive alive. Gators, break. Gators did not have an option to, to decline that penalty. Automatic. Certainly they would have. Second and 11. Moffitt setting up the screen very nicely to Smith, but look at Reggie Nelson come flying across the field and make the stop in the open field. A loss of two yards. Nelson showing why he is one tough playmaker for that Gator defense. And, and David, this is all about reading your keys. Right here, you see Nelson to the left side of your screen. Now watch him coming into the picture. Gets out there before Marcoux could get to him. Gagne Marcoux, the big center, All-American. All Everybody's All-American, All-USA Conference. Nelson beat him to the punch. Got there before he could get his block made. Another big third down play. UCF, this drive started at their five-yard line. They picked up a couple of first downs. And Moffitt throwing over the middle again, and it is caught again, this time by Mike Walker, their go-to receiver. But it looks like he is one yard short of a first down. And David, these are big receivers. Uh, Walker is 6'2". Joaquin, uh, Sergio Joaquin is 6'5". And this ball, every ball has been up in the air. Nice job of getting rid of the ball. Gets a little pressure there. The Gators have got to do something to reroute these receivers. Force Moffitt to hold the ball a little bit longer. Right now, he's throwing everything on rhythm and completing it. I don't see a punter in the game for UCF. It looks like they will go for it on fourth down and a long yard at the Florida 45-yard line. They line up in the eye. Kevin Smith, the eye back. Jason Peters, the fullback. And a flag before the ball is snapped. The, I think the clock might have gotten them, and they're going to be penalized five yards. Yep, the play clock is down to zero. Right to the snap. Delay a game, number nine, on the offense. Five-yard penalty. We play fourth down. That you su right. you're surprised that they were going to go for it on fourth and one because George O'Leary, normally a bit conservative and likes to play that field position. And well, they got a rhythm right now. Everything's going yeah. their way, and you don't want to punt it away when you got a chance. You, you know, if you make the first down, you keep that explosive Gator offense off the football field a little bit longer. All right, Allen Horn back to punt. Reggie Nelson stands deep. And a low kick that hits at the 20, takes a Florida bounce. And the Golden Knights down the ball right around the 20-yard line. Senior quarterback Chris Leak last week threw for 248 yards on 21 of 30. And three touchdowns. Leak will throw on first down to Jamel Cornelius. He got a terrific block from Caldwell. And another one downfield, uh, I think, from Ingram. And picks up 17 yards on the play. That was Percy Harmon downfield. Oh boy, he, he got a couple of good blocks. It was Ingram. Cornelius Ingram with the second block. Nat, you love to see those wide receivers block downfield, don't you? Well, and, and, that, and that's what it's about in this offense. Those receivers blocking for each other because there's going to be a play when all of a sudden you've got uh, Jamal Cornelius doing the blocking and Percy Harvin's running with the football or uh, Andre Caldwell. You name it, you know, they like to spread it around here. 
The hands off to Deshaun Wynn. Banged up last week, but stutter stepping through the middle of the line and picks up excellent yardage, but there is a flag on the play. Kyle Fowler made the stop. And it's going to go against the Gators. Starting lineups brought to you by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. Let's check out Florida's offense. The offensive line graded out quite well last week, despite uh, all new starters in there, with the exception of Steve Rissler, who had a number of starts a season ago. Backs and receivers, a very talented, explosive group. Jamel Cornelius, who had that first catch tonight, uh, is a guy that the Gators want to get the ball to more. Dallas Baker had nine catches last week against Southern Mississippi. And this holding penalty, very costly, because instead of a, another first down up near midfield, it'll be first and 20. And the ball is back at the 31-yard line. And Leak hands off once again to Deshaun Wynn. And he picked up two yards to the 33. UCF's defense. Last week they had their problems with Villanova. Let's take a look at their line. Led by Dusable and Shulligan in the middle. Welsh and Okamore on the outside. Their linebackers. Last week, Hogue had 11 stops against Villanova. And their secondary, the strength of their defense, led by Joe Burnett, one of the top freshman defensive backs in college football a year ago. Uh, five interceptions last year, and also uh, one of the top punt returners in the country, returning two uh, punts for touchdowns. Pressure coming from the outside. Leak steps up and runs it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Leak uh, not known for his uh, running ability, but when pressed to do so, is very capable. Well, we saw Chris do a lot of this. Now you'll see the pressure coming up there. He spots it right away. He sees the gap. He takes off, and he tries to get as much as he can, then gets down. You know, good run on second down. Gives himself a good third and medium situation with the Gators to handle. Chris Leak, his numbers from uh, last week. Making his 35th start consecutively for the Florida Gators. Big third down play on the Florida 41-yard line. Three receivers to the left. Leak standing tall in the pocket. Very calmly finding Harbin. And the freshman exploding down the left sideline. Percy Harbin. Touchdown, Florida. Is this kid a playmaker or what? And David, you gotta, you gotta love this young kid, Percy Harbins. But you also, we talked about a couple plays ago, the blocking of the receivers downfield. I hope when we get a chance, we'll go back and look at the key block thrown by the receiver to spring their counterpart, Percy Harbin, as he goes 58 yards for the Gators' first touchdown of the day. And Hetland's extra point is good. Chris Hetland makes it seven to nothing. This guy right here has the key block. They show three-man line, and they bring a linebacker. Good job. Chris Leak having the presence of mind. Good adjustment by the freshman, Percy Harvins. And then look at the blocking out front. Jamal Cornelius, a minute ago, everybody was throwing a block for him. And then Andre Caldwell coming in with the cleanup block to spring him into the end zone. Outstanding blocking by these receivers as well as the offensive line. And what a play by Harvin, a freshman who last week did a little bit of everything for the Gators and clearly is going to be a playmaker around here. Last week, a reverse, a shovel pass, an end around. And he scores his first touchdown in the first quarter here tonight against UCF. The kick by Jonathan Phillips down in the end zone. And let's get an update from Steve Babbitt. Steve. One of the many traditions Urban Meyer instituted for player development and uh, team building was freshmen come in and they wear a black stripe on their helmet the first week of practice or until they have to lose the stripe. Basically, you've got to do something spectacular to have this black stripe come off. Well, you have a big brother. Jamel Cornelius was the big brother for Percy Harvin. After day one, Jamel Cornelius told Urban Meyer, Percy Harvin, black stripe, is gone. So they took off the black stripe and Percy Harvin, now a full-time member of the Gators. It's a great team uh, building concept and the, the neat thing about it is the big brother goes to the coach and says coach he's pretty good he loses the strike and is uh, an interesting tradition and one uh, that the players seem to, to really enjoy I'm not sure how the the freshmen enjoy it the pressure <laughs> to get that stripe removed off their helmet in practice in preseason but uh, it seems like a, a good team building 
effort by the coaching staff, Nat. Great team building effort, but even more so for, for a young guy, a freshman receiver that's come in or a freshman that's coming in from another program. Prior to the snap, offsides on a defense. The player moved as a result. Players jump. We'll remain fair. Well, uh, going back to talking about the, uh, the stripe removal, it gives that young guy that's been all world somewhere else a chance to earn his stripes when he comes here, more so than coming in with all the praise and think it's an automatic. So I think it's a, a, great, a great move by the coaching staff for these young guys. Five-yard penalty against the Gators. The ball carrier is the fullback, Jason Peters, a senior out of Seattle, Washington. He picked up one yard. It'll be second and four at the 26. From their 26, the Gators have them stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And the give is to Smith. Well, the Gators have so many blue shirts around there. Rather, it's Peters uh, getting the call once again, Jason Peters. Yeah, the Gators are walking six, seven, sometimes as many as eight, nine men up around the line of scrimmage, uh, daring them to throw the football. George O'Leary plays a ball control type of offense. They they will pound the ball at you. They'll try to find something that might be a weakness in your defense, and they'll take advantage of it for as long as it works. And right now, they're running it between the tackles on this possession. Moffitt rolling right, throwing quickly, and the ball is caught by Mike Walker. Ryan Smith takes him out of bounds, but the Golden Knights pick up a first and ten. Walker, a young man that is coming off knee surgery and still kind of feeling his way back. A very explosive receiver, but I'm not sure if he's ready to to be all that explosive this early in the season. Still kind of testing that knee out. Well, and, and, and the key is they run a very safe play as you get Moffitt outside the pocket and Walker, the young man that went in motion, just turns up, knows that he only needs a yard and a half for a first down, gets the first down. Well, they're three out of four on third down conversions. Joe Cohen came busting up the middle and dropped quarterback Stephen Moffitt for a loss of two. So many times we talk about the ability of a would-be tackler to get off the block and make the tackle. That time, Joe Coyne had great vision on the quarterback, and as he started to try and run the scramble play right up the middle, quarterback draw, he's able to get off his block, make the tackle with his left arm. Just outstanding reading and, and reaction. How many times have you seen a guy go from running back to defensive tackle <laughs> in college football? Joe Cohen has made that adjustment for the Gators. And asked to be moved. Yeah. Moffitt showing that strong arm. Should have been caught. It's an incompletion. Ball intended for Joaquim. And there is another flag down. This one is going to go against the Golden Knights. But another well-thrown ball by Stephen Moffitt. Well, he's, he's hitting his receivers right on the money. That time, the receiver tried to catch the ball in his chest instead of catching it in his hands. Holding number 85 of the offense. Penalty be declined. Third down. George O'Leary, great success as the head coach at Georgia Tech. The ball club in 98, went 10 and 2, and uh, was a co-champion of Atlantic Coast Conference. Last year's Conference USA Coach of the Year. Golden Knights went 7 and 1 in conference play, won the East Division. They're the preseason pick to do it again. Moffitt's throw under pressure this time is incomplete. That time he had to hurry it and threw off his back foot. The Gators were getting good pressure from Ray McDonald. Well, this time the Gators bring pressure from out here. You'll see Ryan Smith coming on the blitz, unblocked. Good job of getting his hands up, forcing the errant throw as he overshoots his intended receiver, Willie Thornton. Second punt of the game for Allen Horn. Reggie Nelson back to return. Much better punt by Horn after the 28-yarder. And Nelson, did he call for a fair catch? I guess not. And he is uh, fortunate to hold on to that football. Beautiful punt. 51 yards without a return. 51-yard punt by Allen Horn. And uh, Reggie Nelson almost got himself into a little bit of trouble trying to return it as the Gators have taken the 7 to nothing lead. Let's get another look, Nat. Yeah, Reggie Nelson has got a fair catch this ball. Janelle Neal is right here, right, right in the way as he's catching the ball. Almost kept him from even being able to catch the football. Deshaun Wynn running it on first down and picks up uh, seven yards out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Boy, it's uh, good to see Deshaun Wynn back 
and healthy this week. He banged up his shoulder, his neck and shoulder last week and didn't play in the second half after getting 45 yards on the ground in the first half against Southern Mississippi. Win running very strong early tonight. Yeah, he was running exceptionally well last week. He was averaging over six yards per carry before he banged his shoulder. Harvin in motion. Leak fakes the handoff to Percy Harvin. And the pass intended for fullback Billy Latsko is incomplete. Latsko, a guy that's been banged up and uh, was not at 100% last week against Southern Mississippi. But uh, Big Billy has had a good week of practice. And the fifth-year senior from Gainesville, one of 13 fifth-year seniors on this Florida team. He, he's one of the more valuable guys that just do whatever the team asks. We talked about Joe Coyne earlier moving from fullback to, to defensive uh, tackle. You know, Billy Lasko is the same way. Wherever you need me, coach, I'm ready to line up and get it done. They're down in a no-back set for Chris Leak. Leak on the option, the inside pitch to Harbin. Look at that cutback move by Percy Harbin. Then the ball pops out, but was he down? I think they're going to rule that Harbin was on the ground. We have not seen a signal indicating at UCF football, at least not from the officials. And they'll say his D was on the ground at the 46. Oh, well, they're signaling UCF football. And they have given it to him now. Well, this will be an outstanding opportunity to go back and take a look. You know, Percy Harvest makes a good cut and look like the ball comes out from that angle as he hits the ground. But you, know, you couldn't really see. Let's see. Here's another look at it. Outstanding block by Jim Tark right there as he just pancakes a UC. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's got to be either way, you know, but they will review it. He did his knee was on the ground when the ball came out. Well, I'll tell Let's you. Let's see this angle. Nope, I think it's a fumble. That yeah, looks looks pretty close to being out. After review of the previous play, video evidence shows that the play stands as called on the field. First down. He put it away. On the turnover. And the Gators won the turnover battle last week, 3-1 against Southern Mississippi. But the Golden Knights with good field position. And Kevin Smith, you can see why he is touted as a big-time running back. Out of South Florida, Miami Southridge High School, Kevin Smith with terrific yardage on first down. And this time, as they try and get to the left side, Gators are in great position. Get the crackback block, everybody's there. But a nice job by Smith of just cutting it back. A very patient runner, David. Yep. Give the linemen a chance to get their blocks. And it's a good offensive line. A veteran, the most experienced line, returning to college football this year. This time, Smith is hit up just beyond the line of scrimmage and it's going to be close to a first down while they sort things out let's take a look at tonight's Geico quote of the game presented by Geico where 15 minutes could save you 15 percent on car insurance Ryan Smith the transfer from Utah I always wanted to play big-time college football it was like a dream I almost got teary-eyed on the Gator walk. That's Ryan. In the formation, only six men on the line, offense. That's Ryan talking about his experience last week against Southern Mississippi, a young man that started his collegiate career at Utah with Urban Meyer and that coaching staff out uh, in Utah. And uh, last year fell into a little disfavor with the Utah coaching staff, lost his starting job. And because he had graduated from college, he was able to transfer and immediately be eligible to play for another Division I team, the University of Florida. And a familiar coaching staff with Chuck Heater in the secondary and Urban Meyer as the head coach. Penalty against UCF and the throw by Moffitt is incomplete. Intended for Rocky Ross who has one catch already today. And the Gators get good pressure on Moffitt again, Matt. Well, they bring the corner blitz, but once again, outstanding blocking. Nice job by Kevin Smith. Just an errant throw. This is a... a Offensive line that really knows their their jobs and they do a nice job of just passing guys along staying at home So they don't get full as the blitz and the pressure comes Moffitt has shown that if he is given time to stand back there. He's going to throw good balls Pressure again McDonald Moffitt will keep it Tony Joyner up ends him at the 42 yard line Joyner the player of the game on the defensive side of the ball last week for the Gators how improved is this junior, Nat, from Haines City, Florida. He is a much 
different looking player than from a year ago. It's called maturity and experience. And Moffitt does everything he can to buy time and then he decides to break the pocket. We said he was a scrambler. Nice move, tried to cut it back inside, but Charlie, I mean, uh, Tony Jordan having the ability and, and the wherewithal to reach back and, and snatch him out of the air with that right arm. I almost said Charlie Jordan, the all pro receiver. <laughs> Alan Horn's third punt. And the fair catch is made by Reggie Nelson at the 14-yard line. Here at the Swamp against Southern Mississippi. This week, another opponent from Conference USA. And an in-state uh, rival, the University of Central Florida Golden Knights. Here is Harbin again. They've gone back to that well. And Harbin is off to the races. Brought down from behind at the 33-yard line of UCF. There is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. Well, we, we talked about big plays. Percy Harvin has given us big play after big play, but look like this one is going to get called back. Outstanding run once again by Percy Harvin. 55 yards, but it's coming back. Illegal chop block against number 79 and 63 of the offense. Half the distance to the five. Replay first All right, the illegal chop block is the call, and the Gators going to have this, this one called back, but Harvin making a big play earlier in the first period, a 58-yard touchdown catch and run, and that's the only score on the board to this point. And, David, that, that was a team-coordinated effort. Percy Harvin will get the credit, but everybody got their block. Everybody did their job to create that big play. The Gators had... Uh, Six plays over 20 yards last week against Southern Mississippi, but no real big play. So already a 58-yard pass connection tonight, and it looks like uh, the Gators have the chance to make a lot of more big ones here against UCF. But the penalty brings the ball back to Sean Wynn, pounding it up between the tackles, and carries it out to the 15-yard line. And, and the tackle made by Hogue. As Hogue makes the tackle on Wynn, you know, talking about big plays, this is a ultra-conservative defense that basically want to make you go the distance, you know, short plays all the time, not giving up the big play, and already the Gators have hit them with several big plays, a couple of them been called back, but there is a potential there when you've got playmakers like Percy Harvin, like Andre Caldwell, like Jamal Cornelius, and we haven't even called Dallas Baker's name all day. Andre Caldwell, another guy that can make big plays. The Gators have a lot of them. Second down as the Gators start the second quarter from their 15-yard line. Quick toss to Caldwell. Andre Caldwell at the 20 and is hit and knocked down a short of the first down by Joe Burnett, the freshman All-American from a year ago out of Eustis, Florida. You mentioned it, uh, Natty had five interceptions last year. Also a terrific tackler. He had 15 tackles from a cornerback position. That's a lot of tackles for a cornerback. He's got great talent. Yeah, he's a Jim Thorpe Award nominee in the preseason All-USA uh, Conference uh, first team. So, you know, young man has a lot of talent. Third down and four. Leak rolling out of the shotgun. Finally finding a receiver as he had plenty of time, and they're going to call it a catch and a first down for the Gators. David, one of the things the Gators wanted to do was, against this football team, move Chris Leak out of the pocket, roll him one way or another. This time they roll him to his right, his strong side. He's got pressure coming from the back side, but because of the roll, he's able to get, get outside and then find an open receiver. Did a nice job of scanning the field down, downfield and then coming off to his outlet for the first down. First catch of the night for Cornelius Ingram. Chris Leak now third all-time in passes attempted. He has just passed John Reeves for number three on the all-time list. Leak looking long, now throwing over the middle. Caldwell can't hold on. Sort of got his feet turned around on him, and that one slips in and out of his hands. The junior from Tampa broke the leg against Tennessee last year, missed the rest of the season. Here's another look at it as Chris Leak's, you know, double pumps, and this ball's slightly behind. Caldwell, nice job of trying to turn and, and while suspended in there, make the catch. You know, this is one that uh, Caldwell will tell you he would catch nine out of ten times. That time he just was not able to come down with it. And uh, no defender anywhere near him. And a missed opportunity for the Gators. That's the only pass that Leak has not completed. 
Offensive line doing a nice job of protecting Leak. And another drop ball. This time it's Harmon. Well, Chris Leak uh, has had two drops in a row. And look at the, the senior come up to the freshman and say, look, don't worry about it, young fellow. We're going to come back to you. And, and that's what it's all about. Another nice job of Chris getting outside the pocket. I'll tell you what happened to the young fellow right there. That time Harmon tried to catch the ball in his body, let the ball got to him, and it slid right through. Got to catch those counter balls in your hands. You got to reach back and pluck it out of the sky just like it's an apple. Now a one back set. Keystone Moore. And it's Leak rolling to his left this time. All kinds of uh, throwing room, and this pass is incomplete. So the Gators go 0 for 3 as Kenneth Tooks. Unable to bring it in cleanly. He continues to have a conversation with the official. Let's go back and take a look. This time you move Chris to his left. He has to turn around, reset his feet. And there he sort of short on this ball. Hmm. Can't tell from that angle, but a nice effort by Kenneth Cooks. Well, that looked like a good catch. Trying to get both arms underneath the football, but uh, side judge said no way. Urban Meyer out on the field uh, arguing for Tooks. But no challenge, and Florida will punt the ball away. Well, David, Florida will punt the ball away, but that time they stopped themselves. You had uh, two drop balls yep. and then uh, an underthrow by Chris Leak, probably the worst pass he threw all afternoon. Eric Wilbur's first punt. There's Joe Burnett standing deep for UCF. And the senior from Winter Park, Florida. Low line drive, and it is fair caught. Burnett at the 35-yard line. UCF football early in the second quarter. Smith the ball carrier and knocked down by his own man, but that was the play of Earl Everett that shoved the offensive lineman back into Kevin Smith. Uh, and that's what you've got to do. you got those big horses out front. Uh, nice job of just getting upfield, creating a pile, not allowing Smith to cut back. There's no seam there as Patrick Brown gets knocked right back into the ball carrier. Outstanding effort. And the hit. Earl Everett coming in, cleaning up. You know, we talked about getting some tackles for losses, getting some tackles for no gains. Gators are starting to get that done. Still don't have a sack, though. Now the Gators need to force uh, some turnovers here. UCF has forced the only turnover so far tonight. Florida, a ball-hawking football team. Mike Walker makes the catch at the 41-yard line, a five-yard play for UCF. Both of these teams, Nat, very, very adept at forcing turnovers. UCF ranked number 12 last year in turnover margin. And the Gators uh, even better at number three, plus 18 for the year last season. Urban Meyer's clubs are known for their takeaway ability. Utah, very much the same story and at Bowling Green. Third down, Moffitt goes down, Marcus Thomas. He is an incredible athlete, a guy that can do a standing back flip at his size. And he didn't need to do anything but just charge the quarterback and put Moffitt on the ground. Well, you'll watch Marcus Thomas just splits the guard in the center, comes in and just politely puts him to the ground. you got a double team block. The guard, big number 79, Kyle Smith, start to turn out. And Gagnon Moffitt is thinking he's getting, Marcus, excuse me, is thinking he's going to get some help. He doesn't get it. Marcus Thomas makes the play. Lineman and uh, also the Atkins brothers at Florida State and Miami. Very interesting stuff. Good stuff on Rec Warehouse College football. Leak's pass is almost picked off. And it might have been. No, they're going to rule it incomplete. Oh, a near leak interception that time as Kyle Fowler almost uh, made the play for UCF. Well, Chris gets pressure right up the center, and he's trying to throw around the blitzer. This ball is just overthrown. He's trying to get the ball to Dallas Baker, but nice job by Dallas of going in there, stripping the ball out. The ball actually hits the ground. And Kyle Fowler, a redshirt uh, freshman from Longwood out of Lake Brantley High School in the Orlando area, just about had an interception. And I think this time uh, the challenge comes from uh, Coach O'Leary as he steps out. 
And uh, from what we saw, David, if he did make the challenge, he will lose. Yep. Now watch, watch Dallas Baker. He's number 81. That's who he's trying to get the ball to. Now as the ball is slightly being intercepted, see how he pulls it out. Ball goes down, hits the ground, and that's why it bounced up in the air like that. Right. Here's another look at it. Ball hits the ground right there. Bounces up. After review of the play, video evidence shows that the call stands as called on the field. It will be charged to Central Florida. This is their first time out of the first half. It is second and 10 from the 21 yard line. Florida leads seven to nothing. And a fumble on the snap. Leak pouncing back on it at the 19 yard line. Just a mishandled exchange between Leak and Wynn. Let's go back and take a look. Uh, right here, it looked like he never really got it. Yeah. And uh, just uh, good awareness getting on the football. Florida's offense all of a sudden very sloppy. And sputtering. That is not likely to happen anytime soon. Leak steps up and throws a strike to Dallas Baker. He made one man miss and is tripped up at the 47 yard line by Vincent. Baker, who had nine catches last week, ten catches in the final game last year in the Outback Bowl, so that's 20 catches now for Baker in the last two-plus games. And, and Baker is, is working against number 19, Joe Burnett, but watch the little quick move, puts his hand down, jumps up, and then picks up additional yardage. Outstanding run after the catch. Dallas's first catch tonight goes for 28 yards. And uh, he made a pretty good uh, coverage guy miss him out there on the corner. Play action fast, a fake, and the throw by Leak is caught. What a beautiful catch by Cornelius. Jamel Cornelius twisting his body back toward the sideline and holds it in. Well, one of the things the Gators wanted to do was get the ball into Jamal Cornelius' hands. Low play action. Nice little ball, ball's outside, throwing it away from the safety. Nice job of re re reversing his body. Now watch him turn inside, and he's gonna turn all the way around and make the catch. Great concentration by Cornelius to come down with this scrap. Well, that is a big uh, first down play for the Gators. Now to the UCF 31 yard line. Jared Faison, the freshman is Wide out to the right side as the ball goes uh, inside to Deshaun Wynn. Gators uh, committed to running the football as we talked about in that one of our key storylines tonight inside the game. But uh, they have really gone to, to putting it in the air here in the second quarter. Well, they're finding big holes in, in this uh, zone defense. And, you know, Chris has just been off target. He had a couple drop balls when you look at his numbers. So, you know, there's no reason not to throw the football if you've got receivers that wide open and they're making plays. 28 yards on the ground for the Gators, 22 for the Golden Knights. And here's Harvin on the handoff, the end around. Percy Harvin stepping out of bounds at the 25 yard line. And you know, you're still looking, Nat, for somebody to emerge running the football for the Gators. Deshaun Wynn. I think by now we pretty much know what kind of back Deshaun Wynn is. He's a guy that is solid, but uh, not going to be a big play ball carrier. So the Gators are looking for somebody, and uh, perhaps Harvin is that guy that you can hand the ball off to like we just saw on an end around and get him in a position to get you some running yards. Well, David, when I look at this offense, I almost think that your slot guys are the playmakers more so than your running back. Yeah. Your running backs are more the pounders that's just going to get the tough yardage for you. No back set, three men wide to the left. Leak fakes the pass and runs it. That looked like a cold running play for Chris Leak. He stood up, pump fake, and then darted up the middle for six yards and picks up a Florida first down. And, and this time they catch the perfect coverage because he's going to get a blitz coming from out here. And you get good blocking. You see the tackle turns out. Nice job of making the, the uh, linebacker miss him. You think Richards is going to be able to bring him down? Not so, as Chris Leak is starting to show he's fleet a feet. This drive started at the 21 yard line. We're inside of nine minutes left in the second quarter. Deshaun Wynn in motion. Again, Leak fumbles the snap. Trying to make something out of it and finds Deshaun Wynn. 
Wynn has excellent hands, the senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And he's got a first down, or very close to it. It looks like it will be spotted inside the 10 for a first and 10. Corey Holt made the tackle for UCF. I tell you what, look like Chris is just trying to do too much too fast, and he's not waiting and catching the football. That time he put the ball on the ground, but had the presence of mind to pick it up, knowing he's buying time because it's a roll route where he's getting outside the pocket anyway, and then coming to his uh, outlet receiver, Deshaun Wynn, for the reception. Leak has already thrown for 172 yards today. Lasko in the game. And the handoff to win, running off right tackle into the end zone, touchdown! Eight yards for Deshaun Wynn, and the Gators take a two-touchdown lead midway in the second quarter. And David, that's just good blocking by that right side of the offensive line with Tate Casey at the tight end, Carlton Metter at the right tackle, Drew Miller at the right guard, and Steve Rissler, and then just a nice job of tucking in behind those blockers giving everything a chance to develop and then slipping into the end zone. And a fumbled uh, snap. This happened last week, and Wilbur throws it up for grabs, and it falls to the turf. The things that he's watching, and this... This is another look another at the look. touchdown, and there you see a good lead block by Billy Latsko. And uh, Wynn walks into the end zone, but an outstanding job of blocking by the right side of the Gator offensive line. Nice job by Carlton Metter, good job by Billy. Let's go, Tate Casey, you name it. Those guys uh, did a nice job just getting movement along the line of scrimmage. And this gets Deshaun Wynn into the end zone. Wynn's second touchdown run of the year, the 21st of his career. And David, this is the second time where Eric Wilbur has just not been able to handle the snap. It's a perfect snap. Everything's done properly. Perfect snap, he just doesn't catch the football. You know, a lot of teams have went to where they use the punter as the hold is strictly because the punter and the uh, field goal kicker are together all the time, get a lot of time to work together. In Orlando, getting ready to uh, hold the next time the Gators have a, an opportunity. And this is uh, Curtis Francis on the return for the Golden Knights, bringing the ball out to the 29-yard line. Against Southern Mississippi, that was off of an early turnover. And the Golden Knights have yet to seriously threaten tonight in game two. Moffitt rolling to his right, and his pass is incomplete. Intended for Thornton, who caught a ball early tonight, but uh, has still just one reception. He had three catches in their game last week, did Thornton against Villanova. But this is not Villanova's defense out here tonight. And the Gators' defense are really doing a nice job of trying to break down that pocket, but the uh, athleticism of Stephen Moffitt He's always able to get outside and get rid of the football. And the Gators have yet to force a turnover in this game. Kevin Smith, or rather fullback Jason Peters, getting the second uh, down handoff. For no gain. Third and ten for the Golden Knights. They are three for seven in third down conversions. Marcus Thomas charging across the line, and he was drawn by their tackle I think Josh uh, sitting and David when, when you play against a guy with the speed of a Marcus Thomas you are got to anticipate snap, false start number 70 of the offense five-yard penalty for deep third down if you're the offensive guard offensive tackle that's playing over him you've got to anticipate the snap count because he's just too quick for you to get off the ball late and still be able to block him so you know, give Marcus Thomas credit for forcing that uh, that penalty. Derek Harvey in the game at the defensive end. That moves Ray McDonald to tackle. And Moffitt throwing and completing the pass at the 31-yard line. And a very solid tackle made by Reggie Lewis. Jason Peters on the receiving end. And the Golden Knights come up short on their third down effort and will have to punt the football once again. Good job by the Gators secondary. They set back in a zone defense. Good pressure there by Jarvis Moss, forcing to throw the ball underneath and then coming up, making the tackle short of the first down. Fifth punt for Aaron Horn. Reggie Nelson standing back at the 31-yard line. Low line drive spiral. 
And Nelson again feeling it with a defender in his face. Reggie Nelson holding on to the football. And the Gators with a two touchdown lead in the second quarter are going to go to freshman quarterback Tim Tebow. Three men wide to the right, one to the left. Basic four-man front for UCF. Tebow going to carry it and runs into the linebacker right up the middle. That's Rex Hill, the defensive tackle that stood in there and knocked him down, a junior out of marathon. Just a little put it in the belly of the running back. A nice job by Rex Hill of just throwing away the guard, just threw him down and stayed at home, made the tackle. Tebow took five snaps at quarterback last week. Strong arm left hander, also an outstanding runner. He'll roll to his right, the lefty. Looking to throw the ball, and he's going to have to tuck it under, and here goes Tebow. Showing uh, some nifty running ability for a big guy. Tebow stands 6'3", almost 230 pounds, and fleet of foot. Finally brought down by Kareem Reed. Well, you get these uh, big... Off de defensive lineman out there trying to make the tackle. There's Wallace, of course, whoop, and then just great running by Tim Tebow. You know, everybody forgets he threw for 95 touchdowns, but he ran for 63 yeah. during his college career. Rushed for over 3,000 yards in his uh, high school career at Nice High School in St. Augustine. Third down, less than a yard out of the shotgun. Harvin in motion. And again, it's Tebow keeping. Tim Tebow made one man miss at the 50, bowls over another defender, and down he goes at the 39-yard line. Power running by the quarterback, Tim Tebow, 29 yards on the play. And, David, I think what we're seeing here as Dan Mullins is making these calls is, you know what, Tim, if we have you just hold on to the football, <laughs> we don't have to worry about you making a mistake. Nice job there. He just sheds a would-be tackler and gets upfield. But great blocking at the point of attack by the center and both guards. I mean, he just makes people miss him. He's a big, big-time quarterback at 6'3", 229 pounds. That's strong. So three plays by Tebow and the Gator offense, and he has carried all three times. And UCF is going to talk things over. Tebow trying to get the crowd charged up. First and ten. Tebow looking to throw. Firing it on the run, and it is caught by Tooks for a Florida first down, a well-thrown ball by the big left-hander and Kenneth took with his first catch of the season. Well, David, that's one of the difficulties when you play against a guy like Tim Tebow. You start to put everybody in there and trying to create no seams for him to run with. He scrambles out, gets the ball to Tooks. Perfect throw, hits him right on the numbers. Joe Burnett on the coverage, but a first down for the Gators now at the UCF 28-yard line. Hands off, Keystone Moore. Moore to the 15, the 10. Keystone Moore, the sophomore from Texas, is in for the touchdown. <laughs> 28 yards on the carry, and well, Tim Tebow just came in there and really rattled that UCF defense with his ability to run the football, and then you open up things for Moore. Well, David, you said it, but you know, no one on the UCF defense felt like Moore had the football. They thought that Tebow was going to pull it out and run with it. He had had such success. You give it in there, there's just nobody there to make the tackle. Another bobbled snap, but Butch Rowley was able to put it down, and Chris Hetland says thank you very much in the second quarter. Nat, uh, what do you like about uh, the blocking here on this Watch play? Watch these guys right here on this. Tebow is going to put the ball in to, uh, to Moore's hands, and everybody just feels like he's going to pull the ball out. All the linebackers went with Tim Tebow, so when Moore popped through that first wave of defenders, there was no one there. Another good block downfield by the receiver, and Moore's able to do waltz into the end zone. And uh, Florida flexing its muscles here in the swamp. They've won nine straight here at home. And it is Cur or rather Curtis Francis bringing it out across the 10 and dropped at the 19-yard line, a 14-yard return. A long-range back. They may have to do it by committee. Well, I think that is what it's shaping up. 
As a win and Moore both getting the call. And there's a fine play by Tony Joyner. And Kevin Smith is stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Well, David, what happens when you're a football player, you'll watch Tony Joyner right here. You know, he's seen this play before. Watch him just fight through all those would-be blockers and then make the play in the backfield. When you start to see this play time and time again, you start to recognize it on the snap of the ball by the motion of everybody on that offensive line. Outstanding job by Tony Joyner there. And George O'Leary this week said uh, that uh, his team has seen what they're going to see tonight from Florida defense and offense, but the speed is what's different. And there's the speed from uh, Jarvis Moss getting in the face of Stephen Moffitt and forcing the incompletion. Once again, Matt, it's the speed of the Florida defense that UCF is having problems with tonight. Now this is Moss right, right out here. Excuse me. It's coming from the, he looked like he was lined up in a linebacker position. They run a in tackle game. That's where the tackle comes out. And then Moss comes in from the end position, comes inside, and he forces the Aaron throw. Here is Moss right there, 94, coming right up the middle. You got the corner blitz, Lewis on it. Nice job by uh, Stephen Moffitt of just throwing the ball in the dirt right at the feet of the uh, tailback, Smith. Third down and 11. Gators with a four-man rush, and again, it's Moss getting a piece of uh, Moffitt's ankle, and the ball is thrown away. So again, the Gators getting pressure on Stephen Moffitt and have forced the punt. And David, we came into the ball game talking about developing pressure, getting pressure on the young man. The Gators have got tremendous pressure on Moffitt as well as the running backs, but Moffitt has done an outstanding job of getting rid of the football, not giving up the sack, trying to save field position. The well, Gators have not forced any turnovers tonight, Matt, as they are accustomed to doing, but they have put a lot of pressure on Moffitt and that UCF defense. Nelson catches the punt at the 44-yard line and is drilled. So no return after the 36-yard punt. Trevani Johnson made the play. Chris Leak back at quarterback for the Gators after Tebow directed a 77-yard drive. And here is Deshaun Wynn, the senior, carrying the ball for about 10 yards. Quickness, but he's just a tough guy to get down on the ground. Second down and short yardage. Well-thrown ball, Percy Harbin with the catch. And the freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, picks up a first down, a 14-yard play. Harbin already with a 58-yard scoring strike from Chris Leak. That time and that is his second catch. Harvin was working against Joe Burnett, which is uh, supposed to be the best cover guy in the USA uh, Conference. Gators in a no-huddle offense. Leak rolling out. Going to keep the ball on the option. And steps out of bounds at the UCF 45-yard line. A three-yard gain. And it'll be second down. That stops the clock with 2.04 remaining. Well, not many coaches have been as outspoken about these rule changes as Urban Meyer. There's another drop uh, ball. This time it's Andre Caldwell. Leak has had at least three passes dropped by his receivers tonight. And Chris is 9 for 15. So you throw in the, those three catches. He'd be 12 for 15 and already would be over 200 uh, yards in passing. Well, and, and also think about the plays that have been called back, David, uh, because of the uh, holding penalties. Or you know, you, You're talking about a team that really has stopped themselves more so than UCF being able to stop this football team off uh, defensively. Good protection for Leak. And a beautifully thrown football, and here go the Gators. It is Cornelius inside the 10 at the 9-yard line of the Golden Knights. 34-yard. Talk about big plays, Matt. They're coming left and right. They're coming runs. They're coming passes. Florida's offense, if it uh, could stop shooting itself in the foot, would be having a huge game tonight. And what they do is they spread them out, and that time you saw the zip on the football from Chris Leak. You know, Chris Leak is a passer. Tim Tebow is a runner that also can pass effectively. So what a combination at the quarterback position when you look at Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. No back set. The ball spotted at the 10-yard line. Leak looking for the end zone. He's got Dallas Baker touchdown. When he's looking to go to the end zone, he goes to Baker, the touchdown maker. And Dallas Baker with his uh, first touchdown catch tonight, but his 13th career 
Touchdown catch for the Gators. And David, he had his choice of receivers on that play because both Dallas Baker and Percy Harvin came wide open in the middle of the end zone, and he took the tall guy as he just lobbed it up to Dallas Baker. With Riley holding, Chris Hetland knocks it through. And Florida opens up a 27-point lead against UCF with 129 left in the first half. Well, you get a little crossing route. You've got uh, Dallas Baker, a nice fake. Just a nice fake, head and shoulder fake as he's going to the corner. And then he comes right back underneath, right down the center. Beautiful move there by Dallas Baker. And then you see also Percy Harvin coming in underneath. Had his choice. He says, I'm going to the big fella. He's 6'3". I think if I throw it up, he can get it. Good move. This is a young man now, a fifth-year senior, Dallas Baker, that uh, came into the game with 100 career receptions for the Gators. So that's a pretty elite company. When we look at Percy Harvin, that's who he reminds me of. West Chandler, a guy that can catch the ball, that can run with the football. You're talking about a playmaker at his best at the wide receiver position. Flags flying in every way. Francis, a nice return out to the 38-yard line. But let's check out the penalty flag. Brian Smith made the tackle. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 56 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. It's creating pressure. Well, the last four times UCF has had the football, they've been three and out. Your first possession, they ran ten plays, and then after that, the defense is just locked down on them. Three-yard gain by Jason Peters. The senior out of Seattle, Washington. Getting uh, the call again. Peters with three carries. Kevin Smith, eight carries and 25 yards. And that Florida already with 122 yards in rushing. All Gator fans should have a copy of that 100-year DVD special. Moffitt is dropped at the one by Marcus Thomas. Boy, how badly did the Gators miss this guy last week against Southern Mississippi? He is a one-man wrecking crew out there. And David, if he doesn't go around you, he goes right through you. That time he took his uh, blocker. He's working against the uh, left guard. He just drives him, or excuse me, the right guard. He just drives him right back into the quarterback. Moffitt never saw him until he was in his chest. And also, he's got those fresh legs for having a week off. But uh, just he came out here today with reckless abandon, ready to play, and ready to make a difference and atone for not being here last week to help his teammates out. Uh, he is charged up, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, that, uh, that whole defense is uh, really, really rolling here as uh, the Golden Knights are looking at third down and long and sitting at their own two-yard line. Gators have got two sacks today, and both of them are by Marcus Thomas. Normally, you look for the Gators to get great pressure from outside. The defensive ends come up with the sacks, and... Marcus Thomas and Stephen Harris and Joe Coyne usually just break down the pocket, force the quarterback not, not to step up so they can get the sacks. But today, he's getting it done on his own. There's a good look at Charlie, Charlie Strong, defensive coordinator and co-defensive coordinator. Well, Matt, uh, Brandon Seiler and Earl Everett normally are the top tacklers for the Gator defense, but we have uh, hardly called their names because the, the front guys are doing such a good job. And, and that's what you want. Some defenses, you say you want your defensive line to keep the linebackers free, keep them clean. And then other times when you got guys like Marcus Thomas, Stephen Harris, and Joe Cohen, you know, you want them to get in there and make plays. Devin Smith is stuffed. And the ball comes out. Let's see if it's a fumble. Well, it's going to be down at the three. Jason Peters, the ball carry, and he ran into Earl Everett head-on collision. Well, Earl Everett heard you say that we hadn't called his name. <laughs> Not so, too much. Uh, yeah, he's had a couple great plays. Yeah, that yeah. time he's right in the hole. Peters had nowhere to go with the football. The ball does come out there. I guess they said his forward progress was stopped. Quick whistle. Yeah, it was. Gators should get good field position here, David, with another chance to put some points on the board. This is their third final timeout. And the timeout is taken by the Gators, their third and final timeout. Staff have uh, taken the timeout at the same time on the clock. And the Gator offense is ready to charge onto the field because the clock will start on the ball ready signal for the officials after this punt return by Reggie Nelson which is going to be to the 35 yard line so the Gator offense is ready to sprint onto the field and uh, they've got their play ready to go with 38 seconds left 
in the first half. Now they've got to be ready to snap the ball as soon as the uh, referee signals the ball ready for play. Well, the clock hasn't started yet. Total yards 363 for the Gators and only 71 for the Golden Knights. Good job by the Gator offense to be ready to go. The pass threaded in there between two defenders by Leap to Dallas Baker. And Baker did not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to roll with 18 seconds left in the half. Well, David, I, I, I don't understand that call that he did not get out of bounds because, uh, you know, he actually got tackled out of bounds. Huh. Well, now we're down to 12 seconds left. And it looks like they might be checking uh, to see whether or not it's a first down. That's why the clock has stopped. It took them a long time to, to figure out that they needed to stop the clock, too. Well, I, I think what happens is because they ruled that he didn't get out of bounds, he got out of bounds, but they say he was going backwards to get out of bounds, so they ruled him out, so they got to take his forward progress and uh, look like it is a first down. But the Gators lost about 15 seconds while the officials let the clock run and they stood around watching the football before they decided to measure for the first down. Well, this play needs to go into the end zone so that uh, if it's incomplete, you got a chance to run your place kicker on. Leaped over the middle and it is caught for the touchdown. Andre Caldwell. You love it when a receiver goes up, knows he's going to take a shot. That time, Andre Caldwell makes the catch for the touchdown. How good is it to have Andre Caldwell back on the field? Ooh. You know, he took a big shot there. And uh, teammates having to carry him off the field. Well, here's the guy that suffered the broken leg last year on an ugly kick return against Tennessee to start the second half. And he is still very shaky. Wouldn't Just you know it? With the extra point. Hey, we, we were able to catch the uh, snap from center this time. No bobbing the ball. Everything clean, but uh, let's hope that Andre Caldwell is okay. This is ball is thrown on a frozen rope. And uh, outstanding catch by Caldwell as he goes up. Watch him go up and catch the ball in his hands. Exposes his body, and then he gets hit. But watch the shot coming off the top, which hits him in the headgear. And uh, that's probably why he's a little woozy. I've been there before, David. Mm. Almost got knocked out, uh, it looked like. Sharef Rashad. And Florida with a 34-point lead, 34 to nothing. Ehas with the kickoff, a little squibber. And it is down at the 41-yard line. And, and David, doesn't even look like the UCF team is uh, looking to come out because they know as soon as they wind the clock, uh, you know, they wouldn't get the playoff. Coach Meyer, I know in that first half, you really liked what you saw in that second quarter. Yeah, I liked the, uh, they, they bounced back. I thought we had, uh, I really liked the first quarter, except for we had some young guys make some mistakes. We had probably 70 yards of offense taken away because of silly penalties, and we had a turnover. I think our defense, we gave up a couple uh, third down conversions. Other than that, they've pretty much stopped them. That looked like the offense you see in practice during the week. Yeah, they're, uh, Chris Sleek and Tim Tebow, that's a nice little combination, and, and we have talented receivers. It's like Bubba Caldwell is extremely rusty, and it was great to see him make that catch. And then uh, Percy Harvin, and, and we're going to see Jared Faison a little bit in the second half, and Riley Cooper. Marcus Thomas makes a difference in there up front. Yeah, he's a great player. He's got to, uh, he's, a, he's a big part of this team. He's got to make sure we take care of him. He's got to take care of the Gators. Coach, young guys in the second half, we'll get to see some new guys come in. Yeah, we're, uh, we want to we want to play. We have a SEC schedule coming up here pretty soon. We want to play, so we're going to keep going as hard as we can and uh, try to play a lot of football here second half. Thank you, Coach. What the Gators have done in the first half, and except for that little stretch in the first quarter, Nat, when the Gators got a little shaky and dropped some passes, had some penalties, fumbled the ball once. Just a tremendous first half of football. On the kick return, this is Brandon James, the very speedy. Yeah, they've tuned it up on defense. Marcus Thomas has come back and uh, got everybody getting in there, getting it done. Jared Faison will take the handoff on the end around out of that slot position. And the freshman carries it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So Faison getting his first collegiate handoff. The freshman out of Tampa, out of Hillsborough High School. And the Gators believe this guy is uh, 
a playmaker along the lines of Percy Harvin. Well, that time he just tucked in behind everybody. You'd like to see Phil Trotwine turn inside instead of continuing to lead up field. You got to turn and hit somebody, you big fella. He still picked up uh, enough yards for a Florida first down to the 41. Urban Meyer telling Steve Babick that we would see Faison, and uh, on the first play of the second half, he gets the handoff. Deshaun Wynn gets the handoff on first and 10 and is dropped at the 41-yard line as uh, Golden Knights get a good uh, push from Kareem Reed, number 99, the senior out of Coral Springs. Florida second down and 10. One back is Keystone Moore. And Moore with some nifty. Or rather, that is uh, Brandon James. Or rather, it is Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn. I get it right. Yeah. Nice uh, little nifty inside running by see, Wynn. See what happens to you when you say Deshaun Wynn's just a plow horse going in there. All well, of a he sudden, made a nice move there. Deshaun Wynn shows you the quick feet. You know, good blocking up front. Everything caves down. Nice job by Drew Miller just driving everybody down. And then Deshaun Wynn does the rest with his feet. You like to see Jamal Canillas get that block there and uh, Wynn off to the races. He's got 51 yards, win on nine carries. Almost six yards per carry tonight. That's similar to last week before he banged up his shoulder, David. Yep. This time the fake to win. And Leak throwing to a wide open receiver, Dallas Baker. Baker with a nice move to the outside and is tripped up at the 13-yard line by Joe Burnett. A slow start tonight for number 81 for the Gators, but uh, now that's his fourth catch. That one goes for 32 yards. And David, this is all Chris Lee. He's got pressure right up the middle. See how he bides time with his feet, resets his feet, makes a good throw. He doesn't want to overshoot his wide open receiver. He takes something off it. Baker does the rest after the, after the catch, picking up additional yardage. Four catches for 81 yards for Baker. And not the way that the Golden Knights had hoped to start this second half after they Gave up 400 yards in offense and 34 points to the Gators in the first half. Leak throwing, it's deflected and picked off. The Golden Knights with their second turnover taken away from the Gators in this ball game as Sharef Rashad intercepts the ball in the end zone off of the deflection intended for Cornelius Ingram. And the Golden Knights with the, the first interception tonight and their second turnover against the Gators. They'll have the ball at the three-yard line. And I'm not sure if it was no linebacker Corey Holt that got his hands on the football, but Chris Leak never saw the defender sitting there in the middle of the field, and he tries to force it in. It's actually the nose guard, big number 74, Keith Shalagan. Shalagan's not supposed to be back there, is he? No, you don't expect that, but... Oh, oh that's a safety. safety. Tony Joyner tackles the ball carrier in the end zone. Kevin Smith could not get out of there. Well, that's what happens, David, when you have a breakaway runner. He's got to realize you're backed up. you got to stay inside. That time he tried to bounce it outside. Tony Joyner playing up along the line of scrimmage is there to make the, set, make the, the tackle. Now, right here, this play is set to go up, up inside, but he tries to bounce it outside, not being aware of where he's at on the football field. Tony Jordan from his strong safety position comes over and makes the tackle for a two-point safety. His type of football and really made it tough on guys to find out who really wanted to play football and got rid of the guys that didn't want to be there. And, you know, now he's got a good football team. Got some good young talent here. He's done more on the kickoff after the safety to the 32-yard line. I tell you what, Dr. Pete's so good that uh, even the Miami Dolphins call him when they need, they need uh, yep. someone to work on uh, their key guys. Play action, Leak looking downfield and goes to his uh, safety valve man. That's Percy Harvin. Harvin, who had the 58-yard touchdown catch in the first half. Just a uh, sensational run after the catch. He also had about a 30-yard play and fumbled at the end of it in the first half. So uh, this guy is... He's going to make a lot of big plays for the Gators in coming years. Well, he's the type of guy that you want to get the ball in his hands or try and get it to him at least eight to ten times a ball game because you know if you do, he's going to make something good happen. And uh, he's done it two weeks in a row. And this is just a true freshman making big plays. By the way, Leak is over 300 yards passing tonight, the seventh time in his Gator career. 
The Gators have not lost a game that he's thrown 300. That looks like that's a pretty good bet to, to keep uh, going here in this one. Andre Caldwell make, makes a couple of Golden Knights miss him. And Shalligan is able to make the tackle about uh, 17 yards upfield at the 47-yard line. Make that a 12-yard pickup for the Gators. Andre Caldwell, another playmaker in this offense, Nat. The problem that Dan Mullen and, and Urban Meyer have is distributing the football, <laughs> trying to figure out who that's a nice problem to have. When last year you had an offense that too often didn't have enough playmakers available, and now the Gators have a lot of them. That's a, that's a great problem to have. And, you know, you got so many guys running in and out of the line of scrimmage, you just don't know who's going to get the ball and who should get the ball. Here's another. Faison, a high school quarterback in Tampa at Hillsborough. He's got a lot of skills, and on that little end around, he picks up good yardage once again. And, David, this is where you get your running game. Your playmakers are your speedy receivers, your slot receivers, the guys that come around on the end around the, the slot sweep or the slot reverse, and they pick up chunks of yardage at a time, 10, 12 yards per carry. So that's how you run the football in this offense. It's not just running between the tackles with the fullback or the tailback. By the way, Faison is a backup quarterback, an emergency quarterback for the Gators. He hasn't worked at that position, but if something happened to uh, Leak and Tebow, then Faison would become a factor there. This time, Leak throws it away, getting pressure. One of the few times tonight that UCF has been able to get pressure on the quarterback. And that time, a nice job by Big 44, Antonio Wallace, the sophomore from Vero Beach, to get in the face of Chris Leak. And Chris Leak had two receivers open, but because of Wallace being right in his face, had to throw that ball away. All right, Leak now is 16 for 24, Nat, and has had four drops. <laughs> so you, you give him those four. He's 20 out of 24 with about 300 and almost 400 yards, probably, if he if he has those other four receptions. But he'll be the first one to tell you that he'd like to have that, uh, that pick that he threw yeah. back uh, where he made a mistake, tried to force it in. Gator coaches say this guy has the best hands on the team. Cornelius Ingram, the converted quarterback, catches everything you throw to it. Sheriff uh, Rashad made the tackle, a 12-yard pickup. Ingram's second catch of the night. And they come with that, they, they were fortunate enough last time to get the interceptions, so they bring the nose tackle back out, Keith Shalogan. And uh, this time, they get the ball to Ingram in a hurry before he gets there. One back set as Leak rolls to the left. And his pass is out of the hands of uh, Ingram, trying to stay in bounds and catch the ball. And he, he was out of bounds when that ball came to him a couple of years as a, as a backup quarterback. And it just goes to show you, you know, so much of what uh, Irvin Marr talks about is that once you play for the Gators, you'll always part of that family because Vernell Brown was the man that came in and actually talked to Cornelius Ingram and talk to him about how tough it was for him. He was a highly touted guy coming out of Gainesville, just like Cornelius Ingram is. And uh, basically, it hurt because everybody's asking you, how come you're not playing? You should be playing. You're better than everybody else. You know, and that's your friends telling you that. Well, it's more difficult when you're in your hometown, oh, too. Oh, without a doubt. But makes, makes the pressure even greater. But the fact that once Vernell Brown talked to him and told him about his experience and how things worked out, Cornelius Ingram is happy, he's glad he stayed, and, you know, he's getting his playing time now. And he's got a chance to play at the next level. And there he is again with a shoestring grab inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Cornelius Ingram, tremendous size at 6'4", 230. In his uh, third year with the Gators, a redshirt sophomore. Played a little quarterback against Louisiana Tech last year. Played tight end in the Outback Bowl. And uh, last week made uh, really his big splash on the scene with a catch and now has three catches tonight against UCF. And, and he's a guy that has the uh, kind of athleticism and talent that reminds you of a guy like Ben Truth that can do it all. So you, you, you want to get try and get him the football as much as possible. And the Gators will take a timeout with 8.43 left in the third. Finished that game with almost 300 yards in one half and that was it for Doug. The Gators won that game 58-27. Johnson, uh, Steve also wore number 12. Leak throwing for Ingram in the end zone, and it is knocked away and incomplete. A good defensive play that time on Ingram. And uh, it was Marlon Williams, the free safety, that knocked that ball away. Gets pressure once again up the middle. Nice job of just throwing the ball out, out front. And, you know, this is one that uh, Ingram's got to make that catch. 
you know, to be a big time tight end or big time receiver, you've got to be able to help your quarterback out and make that catch. Nice job yeah. by Williams of scripting it out, but you, if you're a big, strong guy, you got to be able to pull that down, David. You don't get many opportunities to get in the end zone, so you got to take advantage of all of them. Second down and goal at the nine. Leak's throw is caught for the touchdown. It's Cornwell. And the Gators have scored 42. Andre Caldwell with the second touchdown catch tonight. And, and David, this is a team effort, but I go back to what I just said about Cornelius Ingram. You don't get many opportunities. When you drop the football, one of those other guys are going to step up and get your touchdown. You know, I, I remember playing with Dan Marino, and I actually dropped the football for his 100th touchdown. Well, I'm not in the record books. Joe Rose is because the next you play, had your chance. I had my chance. So it just goes to show you, <laughs> you got to take advantage. But a nice throw by Chris Leak to Andre Caldwell, giving the Bubba Caldwell his second touchdown of the year. Snap infraction against the kicking team, snapping the ball before they're ready to play. Well, these extra points have been a nightmare tonight uh, for yeah. the Gators. Uh, if uh, Urban Meyer's <laughs> looking for something, to rail about this week this is certainly going to be at the top of his list when you play good teams like Tennessee and Auburn and Alabama and the teams in SAC you cannot afford to make those kind of mistakes on special teams this is Eric Nappy and there's a block so the extra point is no good that ball is live and uh, Urban Meyer saying let's get on that football and uh, make this a dead ball three has been a punt a fumble and an interception where they stopped themselves he hops kicking off again for the Gators. And the ball is brought out to the 21 yard line by Curtis Francis. Tim Tebow, uh, not an easy thing to do to warm up while wearing a headset. <laughs> Tebow seems to be able to manage even that. He played one series in the first half and took the Gators to a 77 yard touchdown. Now we're going to see more of Mr. Tebow before tonight is done. That is for sure. Chris Leak with four touchdown passes. And uh, he threw for four against Kentucky last year. The pass is intended for Willie Thornton, and it is incomplete. Let's get a look at Leak's fourth touchdown pass of the night just moments ago. And this time you got a good clean pocket, every good blocking up front, and then he just sort of leads him in there. There's nobody in the middle of the field this time. He saw the nose guard, Keith. Shelligan actually come in, so therefore he knew he had a wide open uh, center of the field for the ball to him. Chris now Nat is 10th on the all-time SEC touchdowns list. Touchdown pass is thrown. That's deflected away by Cohen. And Chris Leak now with uh, he had 68 coming in. He's got 72 touchdown passes and moved past Tommy Hodson of LSU into 10th place all-time in the Southeastern Conference record books for touchdowns thrown. Uh, well, coming in here, we knew that Chris Leak was one of the best passers or pure passers coming out of high school in the country as he threw for 185 touchdowns in high school alone. So that's not surprising. Yeah. Especially when you get the playmakers he have around him to work with. Stephen Moffitt trying to make a play on third down and 10 for UCF. Swings it out, and it's dropped. It's been that kind of a night for Kevin Smith, the sophomore that ran for Almost 1,200 yards as a freshman was Conference USA's freshman of the year a year ago, but has not had uh, much success tonight for George O'Leary and the UCF Golden Knights. Well, David, let's talk defense. First series, UCF 46 yards. Second series, nine yards. Third series, six yards. Third series, fourth series, one yard. Fifth series, three yards. Sixth series, one yard. What a shutout being pitched by this defense. Golden Knights have only four first downs in this game. Four. 7.45 left in the third quarter. On the Florida offense tonight. And he'll roll out to his right on the option. He pitches it to Percy Harvin. That is a deadly duo for the future. One would suspect with uh, Tebow running the option with Percy Harvin. That might be a flash... Uh, into the future right there now well it's a tough play to cover because you got Keystar Moore you got to worry about him on the shovel pass and then you got Percy Harvin outside you know you like to see just a little bit better spacing 
on the uh, option route, but when you got the kind of athleticism that those two guys got, all you got to do is just get one of them the ball in open space. Harbin uh, managed uh, eight yards on that carry. The give is to Keystone Moore, trying to bounce to the outside, and he bounced into the grasp of uh, several UCF defenders for no gain on the play. In fact, he'll lose a couple. Tim Tebow, the freshman, came to the University of Florida in January to get a, a head start, graduated from high school, a homeschooled young man, and he put on a show, Nat, in his first half opportunity to run the Florida offense. Yeah, he, he beat him with his legs and his arms, and the thing that Tim Tebow shows you, when he starts to run the football, David, he looks like a running back. He tucks that ball away. He's not carrying it like a quarterback. He's carrying it like a running back that means business. Urban Meyer says uh, he's a gorilla playing quarterback. He's a big, strong young fella, and he's going to run it behind that big left tackle and pick up a first down to the UCF 32-yard line. Time you had big uh, Maurice Hurt, freshman out of Milges, 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 Milgesville, Georgia. That's nice job of just tucking in behind him. Carlton Metter, too. Carlton Metter, you, you pull your guard and your, and your uh, right, right tackle. And quarterback just puts his hands on his butt, rides it through the hole, gets the first down. Ronnell Sandy is there to make the tackle on Tebow. Marcus Manson is in uh, at the running back position for the Gators. And Manson gets a handoff and down he goes behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. That tackle made by Kareem Reed, number 99. You've got Maurice Hurt playing the right guard position in place of uh, Drew Miller, getting some playing time at that time. Nice job by big number 99. Kareem Reed are just shooting the gap, making the play. UCF has been in that four-man uh, alignment. Really, not many surprises tonight by the Golden Knights defensively. Tebow steps up, gets hit from behind. The ball comes out, and it is recovered by the Golden Knights. And it is a fumble and a recovery. He was trying to throw the ball, but clearly it appeared that his arm was hit as he was drawing back the throw. And uh, there was Welsh, Chris Welsh, that knocked the ball loose for the Golden Knights. And this is where you, you learn. You've got to gain that experience to realize that just because everybody got pushed past you, you've got to take off and go because the pursuit is coming from behind. You can't see it. Ball's knocked loose by Rex Hill and then recovered by number 92, Rex Hill, a junior out of Marathon, Florida. Well, he's a talented uh, freshman, but he is a freshman, Tim Tebow. And that right there is why Florida fans will feel awfully good with Chris Leak on the field next week at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. The pass is caught. And a first down is picked up by Kenny Jackson, the senior from Lehigh, Florida, with his first reception tonight. But uh, seriously, Nat, uh, Tebow, as talented as he is, you go into Knoxville, Tennessee next week, and uh, you got to feel awfully good about a senior going in there to operate that Florida offense. And you know, Tebow's been able to get some good experience tonight. He's going to be a great player down the line. Well, when you go into Tennessee and you start talking about 100,000-plus hostile fans, you know, you've got to have some experience out there. And, you know, yeah. Tim Tebow is going to get his opportunity to play some big ball games. And, uh, uh, next week, it's it's really Chris's job. The key is to get him as much experience as possible so that as you go forward and you need him, he can come in and spell Chris as well as can play in certain situations. That tackle was made by Marquis Anderson, a true freshman from Fort Myers, who has played his way onto the field. There's uh, the young man who just fumbled the ball a moment ago for the Gators. Turnovers have not been kind to Florida tonight. They have yet to force a turnover. One of our storylines for tonight, but it has not been a factor in the game. Moffitt will keep it on the quarterback keeper. The draw across the midfield strike. And Jarvis Moss on the tackle. And David, this play looked like it had big numbers on it, but Jarvis Moss fights off his would-be blocker and gets it by the ankles, pulls him down short of the first down. At the start of this play, he's got a big hole. It looked like he's got everything there with a block in front of him, but nice job by Moss of evading the block and then making the tackle in the open field. Golden Knights crossing midfield, a rarity tonight. 
Florida 42 to nothing late in the third quarter. And the handoff goes to Jason Peters, the big fullback, stuffed near the line of scrimmage. Brandon Sider, big number 93, Stephen Harris in on that play. It's good to see Harris on the field. He and Marcus Thomas held out of uh, the game last week. Outstanding job by Brandon Siler from the middle linebacker slot, uh, filling the hole. You know, everybody takes their gap. Brandon Siler fills his gap, makes the tackle, gets some help from Stephen Harris down at the bottom of the pile. Harris, uh, number 93, has had some off the field issues, but uh, back in the good graces and making some plays here in the third quarter tonight. Jermaine McCullum makes the stop on Mike Walker. Very quiet night for Walker. Second time tonight, David, when they've needed a uh, first down on short short yardage that they've run the receiver in motion, brought the quarterback out to get him outside the pocket and just, you know, throw it to the receiver for a two-yard gain, picking up a first down. Good, safe play. Quarterback will run pass option. Moffitt stepping up, throwing deep down the sideline, incomplete, just overthrown. Anderson, the freshman, with the coverage on Kenny Jackson. Well, David, I, I, you, you say just overthrown. To me, that ball hit him right smack in the hands. It's, you know, when you're down 42 zip and quarterback, everybody's working their, their fanny off, and you're, you're the guy, you've got to make that catch. Uh, you know, Steven Jackson knows that he'll be the first one to tell you this is one that he should have come down with. Heading to the sideline, replaced by Willie Fortin. And it'll be second and 10 at the 48-yard line of the Gators. Moffitt, pressure coming up the middle. He stands in there and takes the punishment and throws a nice ball to Thornton. Safety in the third. Quarterback draw again. Moffitt trying to get the first down on third and three. And he comes up short, tackled by Jarvis Moss. Moss is another guy for the Gators who really is coming on strong after a, a slow start in his college career, had that bizarre hip infection that uh, baffled physicians. They finally figured out what it was and uh, got him some antibiotics, some serious IV antibiotics in him. And, well, since he's been healthy, man, he comes on every week and seems to get better with every week of his football career at Florida. Well, he'll tell you that there was quite a few times that uh, he should have come up with the sack. Great coverage there, but I think the Gators are going to get hit with an interference call on Anderson. True freshman out of Fort Myers, Dunbar's high school. And a very aggressive play. On that one, maybe got there a little bit too soon. He's been called for pass interference. Let's take another look. Pass interference, number 37 of the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, first down. And David, he did everything right, except he grabbed with that left arm as he tried to go around to swat the ball out. And, you know, that's where they called him. Anytime they see you wrap onto the receiver, even if you time it perfect, nine out of ten times, you're going to get hit with the interference call. Going man to man against a. Very talented receiver and Walker. The Golden Knights with their best scoring threat tonight. And the long pass is overthrown, intended for Thornton again. And another flag is thrown. Willie Thornton had single coverage. Pass intended for Willie Thornton. And it uh, looks like we might have back-to-back -back pass interference calls. This will be a hold uh, on the Florida defensive back. Twelve of the defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. I don't think it's number twelve. I think he really meant either. number eighteen. Tremaine, uh, Tremaine McCullough. And you know, anytime you're getting beat as a defensive corner, you're taught grab him, hold him, do whatever you do. You have to. Don't give up the touchdown. We'll line up and, and and play another down. So, you know, smart play on Tremaine's part because he was beat by a couple steps. Now the Golden Knights at the 24. Moffitt back to throw. And his pass is caught at about the 19-yard line. A gain of uh, 
Four yards as Mike Walker pulls in another one, his fifth catch of the ball game. UCF trying to get on the scoreboard late in the third quarter. You know, Mike Walker's working against Markeith Anderson at 5'9". Walker is 6'2". You know, throw the ball up high, lets him, you know, goes up and catches the ball in his hands. Very difficult cover for Anderson. Walker coming off uh, knee surgery from late last season. Unable to play the, the last couple of games for the Golden Knights as they played Tulsa in the Conference USA title game. Walker with his fifth catch of the game. And that should be a first down, a five-yard pickup. Tremaine McCollum on the stop. UCF with its deepest penetration of the night. And 42 seconds left in the third. And, and what we're seeing is, you know, all these passes are being completed right now, David. It's against the second team secondary. You know, all the Jordan and, and uh, Reggie Nelson. I mean, those guys are out of the ball game. Uh, Ryan Smith, they're out of the ball game right now. Anderson, a true freshman in one corner. McCollum, a fifth-year senior. On the other corner, John Curtis uh, playing a strong safety position. And it's first down. Gators coming with pressure. Moffitt's throw is dropped at the five-yard line. Anderson, or rather, uh, yeah, it was Anderson covering Willie Thornton at the five. Well, that ball had some zip on it, and uh, Thornton just weren't able to come down with it. The Gators come with pressure right up the middle. I'll tell you what, you, you have to you have to like Stephen Moffat. The way he stands in there, takes the punishment, delivers the football, and puts it on the money. There's a reason he completed nearly 60% of his passes last year. Moffitt under center, one back. And his pass is dropped again. McCollum with good coverage, but that ball should have been caught as well. Tremaine McCollum covering Rocky Ross. Sophomore from Jacksonville out of Bowles. Had a couple of first-half catches. Has been very quiet since early in the ballgame. And all these are good throws. you got tall receivers. Rocky Ross is 6'2". He's working against, against McCullough, who's only 5'8". You throw the ball up there, catchable ball. Raiders have both McCollum twins on the field right now, yeah. Jermaine and Tremaine. Moffitt pressured from the outside. Now looking for an open man, and it is caught. Should have been a touchdown, but Thornton couldn't bring that one in. Nice job by Moffitt to scramble and find a wide open slot to throw that ball, and then Thornton could not make the catch. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Stephen Moffitt was just going to take off a run because he had a lot of open field there, but he had a wide open receiver, and so he pulls up, aware of where he's at, and then just tries to get the ball to him. Right here, he's got plenty of open field. That's another catchable ball. Each one of these guys, are, you know, they're just trying so hard that they're just not doing things naturally. Fourth down. Pressure from the outside. Harvey hits the man, and the pass is incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown. It probably is going to be a hold, I would think, because, you know, Derek Harvey came flying in there. And the offensive lineman did everything but tackle him to keep him from hitting Stephen Moffitt. Well, I'll tell you what, David. He got a good jump off the ball right here. Bottom of your screen. He just beats the tight end. You got a tight end trying to block it. Mike Merritt, and he just has no chance. Uh, Tim Tebow, who fumbled on Florida's last possession, is back in at quarterback with the Gators at the 14-yard line. And the handoff goes to Marcus Manson. A sophomore from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, getting uh, his first carry of the season. Did not play last week, was a little bit banged up, and is getting an opportunity in the fourth quarter here tonight against UCF. Chance Henderson made the tackle for the Golden Knights. Florida's uh, running game has been solid tonight. And we keep talking about uh, the storylines, Nat, and, uh, and how the Gators will be looking for someone to emerge at the running back position, but it's been yardage by committee. And here's Mon Williams getting his first carry as a Florida Gator, the freshman out of Mesquite, Texas. True freshman. And uh, the Gators uh, thought about redshirting this young man, Nat, but... When uh, Deshaun Wynn got banged up last week, Manson has had some injury problems as well. 
Urban Meyer decided to give him a look here tonight. So Mon Williams, a talented young freshman. He rushed for about 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns last year as a senior at Mesquite, Texas. He's out there on the field. And, and you, you need a bevy of backs to run this offense because the running backs actually run between the tackles 99% of the time, so they take a pounding. Tebow throwing, intended for the tight end Tate Casey. A name we have not uh, heard uh, much about here in the early part of the season, but a very talented tight end, another capable playmaker. He had uh, four touchdown catches, remember, and eight receptions in his freshman year, Nat, and has five touchdown catches in his career, but no catches so far in this young season. But I tell you, I tell you what I like about Tate Casey. It's not about all the touchdown catches he's had, but the guy that's a team player. He's you know, become a good we blocker. We know that he can catch the football. Yep. They've asked him to become a blocker. They want to run the football. They want to be able to utilize him more as a blocker, and he has done a, a yeoman's job at learning how to block and getting the job done. That ball popped up into the hands of uh, Burnett. I think he was trying to stay out of the way of it, and then at the last minute decided to field it. It's great to see Andre Caldwell back getting in the thick of things. You know, one of the things the coaches wanted to do was to get the ball in his hands, get him more involved, and tonight they've been able to do so as he's come up with two touchdown grabs. Leak with 352 yards passing tonight, four touchdowns. He did throw one interception. With those 352 yards, a, a career high, as we pointed out, 19 for 29. And Coming into this game, we talked to Dan Mullen earlier in the week, Nat. He told us that this UCF secondary was an outstanding big-time secondary college football. And maybe they just haven't been able to get enough pressure on Chris Leak. Their front four really never able to penetrate Florida's offensive line. But Leak just had a tremendous night. Yeah, but, but at the times when they really had an opportunity to get there, Chris has done some things. McDonald and Jarvis Moss, I mean, you name it. Those five, six guys have gotten it done. Moffitt scrambling, running for his life, and Brandon Spikes comes up to make the hit on him. Another true freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina. This freshman class, Urban Meyer and his staff brought in. Boy, you got big-time players on both sides of the ball. You're going to hear a lot about number 51, 6'3", 240. A true freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina, and uh, very much in the mold of Brandon Seiler. He's kind of taken Spikes under his wing. And that's what it's about, the, the uh, upperclassmen taking the young guys and showing them the ropes earlier. We talked about, you know, getting the stripes off the helmet with uh, jo Jamal Cornelius doing it with Percy Harvin. You know, that's what it's all about, helping each other, because you were a freshman at some point yourself. Moffitt scrambling and throws it up for grabs. Almost picked off, incomplete. McCollum was there. Jermaine McCollum, the Golden Knights punting for the ninth time tonight on fourth and ten. Beautifully kicked ball by Horn and again the Gators refusing to fair catch. This time it's Brandon James, the freshman from St. Augustine, hanging in there. Vernell Brown, Vernell being a hometown player and dealing with that pressure, what did you talk about with Cornelius to help him at least find a way to make that decision? Uh, basically, you know, I just kind of gave him some perspective, from, you know, from both sides. Like I told him, I wasn't there to tell him, you know, to stay or to go. I was just there to tell him, you know, what things would look like as far as if he stayed and what it may look like as far as if he go. And, you know, you can't let others, you know, make decisions for you. When you're in bad situations, you want to be in it because you put yourself in them, not because others put you in He made a good decision to stay, didn't he? Well, he made a great decision to stay. Uh, to stay. As you can see tonight, he's out there, you know, playing well. Thanks for now. There's Cornelius Ingram and uh, boy, the Gators, uh, the coaching staff, the fans, the Gator Nation, awfully glad that Ingram decided to stay around. As he's got a chance to become a tremendous receiver, perhaps even play at the next level. That catch uh, a moment ago was uh, by Riley Cooper with his first reception, a freshman out of Sarasota. Or rather Clearwater out of Central Catholic High in Clearwater. As Tebow hands off. Uh, Tebow keeps the ball, lost a yard on that <laughs> on that play. Riley is a highly touted athlete, Nat, a uh, tremendous baseball player as well. Nice little play here. Yeah, they're trying to set up the screen. Yeah, and getting it flowing one uh, way. It just took a little too long. You, the, you know, you would like to see your tackle stay up. That time he threw and the defender was able to jump around him and get back in and make the play. But they had a nice play set up to Cooper. Just the uh, timing of the execution was off. He is split wide to the right. Three receivers to the left. The left-hander rolling left. 
And Tebow shakes one man like he's not there and then steps out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Four-yard pickup for Tim Tebow. Without no offense. Oh, you got to because how, how do you get him ready to play if you don't run your offense, the things that you'd like to run with him in a crucial situation? Throwing for the first down. The pass is caught at the 37-yard line. A first and 10 for the Florida Gators. The catch made by David Nelson. A redshirt freshman out of Wichita Falls, Texas. David Nelson is a 6'5 freshman, but watch him take that big body and get down on the ground to make this catch. That's what you got to do. You've got to bail your quarterback out. If he's struggling, he's not going to make a perfect throw all the time. Good receivers make plays to help their quarterback out. That time, David Nelson went down and come up with the reception. First down, Gators. And you look at a guy like David Nelson, penalty decline. First down. How many programs could David Nelson play every Saturday, pretty much every snap for? But he is uh, locked in behind some very talented receivers. But he's only going to get better playing behind those guys because that means he'll have to raise his level of play so that uh, when he gets his opportunity, he can take advantage of it. Ryan Botang, number 17, is in motion. And a flag is thrown as uh, Tebow was going to keep the football, an option to his right, but the penalty flag comes in with 9.42 on the clock. And Florida's offense has gotten a little bit perky jerky as you might expect. Prior to the snap, false start, number 77 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And, and David, right now, for our, our viewers at home, this is the second team that's out there. This second team offensive line, second team quarterback, second team running back. Uh, I, I guess you call the receivers third team because most of the second team guys have already played a lot. Five-yard penalty. Tebow is hit as he throws, almost picked off. And the pass falling incomplete. He was hit by Ronnell Sandy. He never saw him coming. You know, this is his, you know, this is a side where he should be able to see, but he's looking one way the whole time. He's locked in on the receiver. And because of that, Ronnell Sandy is able to come around from his blitzing linebacker slot and get a piece of that ball as he's trying to throw the football. Florida leading 34 to nothing at the half. Tebow tried to toss it forward. And that is going to be an incomplete pass unless it was juggled and then caught by UCF. They say they've got it, and uh, they do. The official indication is for UCF football. Travis Timmons is the man who picked it off. Tebow trying to shovel them past that ball forward. It was deflected around and tipped them in control by the Golden Knights. Well, and, and this is where, you know, you've got to be careful. These are the kind of mistakes you can't, ball oh, ball hits the ground. Or was it his foot? Uh, let's see again. Yep, ball hits his foot and kicks it up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Not many breaks tonight for the Golden Knights, but that one goes their way. And they have the ball at the 36-yard line. UCF has not turned the ball over tonight. How surprising is that when you consider the Gators, as we've talked all, all night long, are a team that forces a lot of turnovers. Urban Meyer's teams, they get after you and they force turnovers, but not tonight. They're minus four in, in the turnover category as Kyle Israel, the backup quarterback for the Golden Knights, is in the game out of Orlando's University High School. And, and that just shows you, even though they're outmanned here tonight, that you know UCF is a very well-coached football team that don't make a lot of mistakes, don't put the ball up for grabs, and and uh, they, they hold on to the football when they get it in their hands with a chance to run with it. Israel, 6-2, 230. And uh, the Golden Knights are going to be down around the 10-yard line as Kenny Jackson with the play and brought down by Marky Anderson. 24 yards on that play for the Golden Knights, and they threaten for the second time tonight. Gators come with a blitz. Nice job once again of picking it up. They come with a zone blitz on the backside, and... Anderson just gives the receiver Jackson way too much room. Easy pits and catch there between Israel and Jackson. Israel only played in one game last year for the Golden Knights. That was against Southern Mississippi. And his handoff to uh, Phillip Smith, the freshman, a true freshman out of Mansfield, Texas, number 30. Might have gotten a yard to the 10. There's no quit in them, David. You know, they, they're still fighting similar to Southern Mississippi, so says a lot for Conference USA. 
Florida's getting a strong dose of CUSA the first two weeks of the season. Two of the better teams in that conference. The flag is dropped as Israel keeps and takes it to the six-yard line. Ryan Stamper, number 41, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, made the tackle. But this one is going to come back if the Gators elect to take the penalty. No, they won't have a choice, will they? It'll be five yards marked off. Illegal motion. It's automatic. And this could be a break for UCF. Illegal formation offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards up the previous spot. We play second down. Because as you get closer down to the goal line, you know, all of a sudden the end line as well as the sidelines become a extra defender. So by getting a little bit more room to operate, it'll give them an opportunity to try and get those receivers through the middle of that field. Second down again, this time ball spotted at the 16. Israel short drop and the ball is caught. Jackson once again, the senior from Lehigh. Started his college career out in California, Bakersfield Community College. Double slant route and this time Gators are in a zone defense. You see everybody's in position coming up making the tackle after the catch. You know, no one's locked in man to man. Outstanding job by the McCullough. Timeout, Central Florida. Jermaine, and then also number four. Wandy Pierre-Louis. Wandy Pierre. Another freshman out of uh, Naples. We've got timeout with 6.29 to play in the fourth. Florida leading it 42 to nothing. Line. Trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Israel is hit and down he goes. He somehow got free and throws on the run to Jackson. Jackson to the six yard line. What a job by Kyle Israel showing some strength to pull away from the defender. And then the presence of mind to complete the pass to Jackson. Well, the Gators have gotten pressure all afternoon. Now watch him break down the pocket, a little tackle end game. And then there you see Clint McMillan not able to come down with the sack. You've got the quarterback wrapped up. You know, you don't need to sling him. You just need to hold on to him, let your friends get there and help you. When you start slinging him and he don't go down, that allows him to catch his balance and complete the pass. Israel throwing for Walker and overshoots his man, incomplete. Well, the Golden Knights unable to convert on fourth down, and the Gators protect their shutout with 5.43 left in the fourth quarter. And, David, the Gators have applied tremendous pressure throughout the ball game, and you have to be impressed with the quarterback from UCF because, <laughs> as we see, George O'Leary said, I don't want to hear it. But you, you, you must be impressed with the quarterback because the, the ability to avoid the sack and get rid of the football. When you get that much pressure on quarterbacks, especially big, strong defensive linemen, you should be able to come down with the sack. We only got two, but we've gotten to the quarterback probably seven, eight times tonight. And did you see at the end of that play another drop, Matt, in the end zone by the security guard back there? <laughs> that makes five drops tonight in the stadium. Florida handing it off uh, inside. Tebow to Mon Williams. And the freshman... Just picking up a yard or two. Florida with only 5-10 left. And now you start to peek ahead to next week uh, and the big one up in Knoxville against Tennessee. But uh, here tonight, the Gators, perhaps Nat, have not found uh, a true go-to back. Deshaun Wynn has carried the ball nine times, but look how the Gators have spread those rushing yards around. And that's what it's about, rushing by our committee. All you want to know at the end of the night, what was your rushing totals? And I think they're getting there because, you know, you got to realize that the slot guys carry the ball almost as much as the running backs. Mon Williams again gets the handoff from Tim Tebow. And now it looks like the, the Gators have just pulled it back and uh, instead of running uh, their basic offense, they're just trying to run out the clock. With only 424 left. Well, you don't want to embarrass anybody, and, and if your idea is you got to get the offensive line some experience, running the football will get them the greatest amount of experience, as well as those backs as you start to search for guys that can run between the tackles, guys that can run tough inside. And uh, Mon Williams is getting his opportunity here tonight. Third down and 10. Tebow's throw is caught. And the Gators pick up the first down. Take Casey, boy. 
He hasn't been thrown too much, and when he gets a chance, he's going to make the, the most of it. That's he's running over the defender. Marlon Williams finally stops him. He's like, you know what? I might not catch much, but I'm going to keep my, per my yards per catch average up. Nice soft throw. Gets the ball out there. Good adjustment by Tate Casey, and then just refuses to go down, picking up additional yardage, getting the Gators out of the uh, end zone, right close to the end zone. Now they've got good field position trying to run out the clock. Gators picking up the first down. Thibault, good protection from that second team line and throws a strike to David Nelson. And the Gators pick up another first down at the 43-yard line. Joe Burnett on the coverage for the Golden Knights. And it shows you how the mindset changed. You, you, you get out of the depths of your end zone and you got good field position. You go back to running your offense because you want to get Tim Tebow some throws. You want to get him a chance to get some chemistry with the receivers. Mon Williams is the running back. As the clock hits three minutes to go in the game. Williams, nice little step to the inside. There is a flag dropped as Williams picks up five or six. Out to the 49-yard line. Officials talking things over. And it'll go against the Gators. Florida looking to make some big plays tonight, Nat. And as we followed that story inside the game all night long, and you'd have to say they've made some strides here tonight with a 58-yard touchdown pass from Leak to Harvin. Nation Big on play. the offense, only six men on the line, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. That was the big play in the first quarter. The Gators have also had a 33-yard pass reception for a, a touchdown to Dallas Baker, a 28-yarder, a 25-yarder. 25-yard run, 28-yard run by Keystone Moore. So there have been a lot of big plays tonight out of that Gator offense. And, and that's what you're looking for. Here's a big play guy facing, finding some running room to the outside, and then cuts it back inside the defender to the 47-yard line. He's a nifty runner as well. Well, David, it's going to be fun around here for the next several years as you look at Percy Harvin, now you look at Faison. Now watch this move. Whoop. Watch. Whoop. And then whoop. One more. You know, I mean, the guy is just unbelievable in the open field. We've heard Urban Meyer talk about it before. He needs 10 to 12 guys to run those wide receiver positions. And I think he finally has it. He didn't have it last year. He's got 10, 12 options this year at that wide receiver spot. No question about it. David Nelson, a couple of catches tonight. Here's the end around with Faison. And the former high school standout quarterback from Tampa crossing midfield of the 48-yard line. Burnett makes the tackle for UCF. Clock continuing to run with 1.42 left in the game. And, David, you saw Jared Faison come right off after that last run prior to this one. He's a little winded because when he took the football that time on the inside handoff, he was coasting. A lot of energy when you make three or four people miss you on the same play. Thibault rolling out. Shows a little burst of speed down the sideline he goes and then steps out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Tim Thibault has thrown for 81 yards tonight and has rushed for, uh, we'll get the official toll, but it's about 60 or 70. Yeah, but I tell you what, Tim Tebow has got what you call a linebacker's mentality because he gets out there, you know, he had to think twice about stepping out of bounds, David. He, he looked, oh, I got a block in front of me. Maybe I should cut this thing back and finally wisely said, you know what, I need to get out of bounds. Take less hits. 61 yards rushing for Tebow, 81 yards passing. And Chris Leak uh, was able to throw for 352 yards. The Gators have 630 yards in total offense. For a snap, picked up by Tebow, dancing around back there, and this time he's able to manage a couple of yards out of it with one minute to go in the game. How important that to get the Tebow this much playing time as you head into a big one next week against Tennessee, just in case you need him. Well, not only just in case, because there might be some plays that you'd really like to have him in because of what he forces the defense to do if you're trying to run that football up the middle. So 
getting him some playing time, getting his teammates comfortable with him back there, calling the snap counts, you know, uh, getting them out of the huddle, all the little things that you do in practice, but it's a different tempo come game time. A couple of mistakes by Tebow, but some wonderful plays. And the penalty flag. I think the 25-second clock might have expired. Nope, there was movement in the offensive line. Looked like the entire offensive line went except the center. He was prior to the snap, it. false start on the offense. Five-yard <laughs> penalty, repeat second down. I guess I was right. He's on the offense. Everybody yeah. knew the snap counter but set, except center, backup center, Eddie Hopp. Well, UCF's got a big one next week against the University of South Florida, big uh, in-state rivalry. This UCF program, a program that uh, – didn't go Division I until 1996, the year after the Gators won the national championship. UCF stepped up into Division I. Mon Williams breaking a tackle to the 35-yard line. And that will be the final play of the football game. With Coach Meyer, Coach, uh, what stood out in this victory today? A lot of good things happened out there. Yeah, I think you can see we have a few playmakers, and uh, I think our defense, I'm glad they got a shutout. Shutouts against good teams are hard to... Uh, Hard to get, and that's a, that was a you know that's a bowl team we just played. So uh, I'm very proud of the way our defense played, and I I kind of like with some of the athleticism we have on offense. Did you see more from your defensive line today that gives you uh, what yeah, you want? I think, you know, that's the front seven played a little bit tonight. From a defensive standpoint, secondary covered well again. Yeah, I got to watch a film. You know, I don't uh, I just didn't see many big plays given up. Yep. Uh, but I think the combination of good coverage and Obviously, you get a little pressure up front with Marcus and Steve back in the lineup. That's a pretty good deal. Chris Leak looked very on tonight. A lot of good throws. Yeah, you know, the, the turnovers bothered us. And I, I, I got to go back and look. And it's just silly turnovers. We take great pride in that. And I know some of them were when the game was already out of hand. But still, we want to take care of the football. Going into the game offensively, did you accomplish what you wanted to see today based on game one? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's still who's our tailback. I can't tell you that. You know, Deshaun Wynn, I thought, ran hard. And Keystone Moore, those are our two tailbacks. We still get a lot better there. Looking ahead to Tennessee. Played a lot of the young players. Yes, we are looking ahead. It's officially Tennessee week. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, man.